there's 12,000 pounds of rock buried underneath me to help me prevent water intrusion with the house. If you want to learn why, keep on watching. Let's get started. My house has a daylight basement, and as you can see, there is some drainage issues with this house. I've always had them, especially because of the driveway that's going directly to my garage. And therefore, once we have so much water or a clog, it tends to overflow immediately. I was the individual that placed this drain right at the base of our driveway when I redid the driveway. However, that pipe that pipes all the way to the back is not being able to handle the amount of water that's going to it. And now that I have a sump pump line and my water line from my driveway, I need to dispense the amount of water going into the backyard in a better fashion. And luckily for us, we have a plan and it starts with this area right here. The beauty of home ownership is that there's always going to be some type of problem and this moisture intrusion issue has definitely been one of the bane of my existence when it comes to this house. There's always been an issue and I've tried to do a number of different things to mitigate those issues. Hopefully this is the final stand that I can do to this house so water intrusion into my garage is something that I never have to think about again. I stake out an area that's approximately 10 feet long by 5 feet wide and start removing the grass as needed. In the grand scheme of things, I did think that I was going to be able to salvage this grass. However, now that this entire project is complete, I'll give you a heads up that I'm just going to be reseeding this entire lawn once it starts warming up. But now with the grass out of the way, we can finally get to the fun part excavation and the only reason why it's fun is because we actually rented an excavator for a day which took care of this massive hole extremely quickly i spent approximately 400 dollars on renting this piece of equipment which is well worth that dollar tag just remember to always call 811 before you dig if you're in the united states because they will come out for free and make sure that there's no electrical water gas lines underneath that you might bust into now there was a pipe underneath which i did know about but it was an old water drainage line that hadn't seen proper water flow in i'm sure a few decades and please don't feel intimidated when trying to use an excavator like this. They're actually quite easy and straightforward. And yes, you might not be as smooth as silk doing this, but it really is extremely easy to learn. And I felt like I got the hang of it after just a mere hour or two. The funny thing is though, with all this excavation is that I actually found a copious amount of drainage rock at a certain point, along with a buried concrete well, which was fully filled up with soil. So I'm at least glad that someone tried to fix this drainage system before I got to it. However, this system is gonna be way beefier than the one that's here. Once I got the vast majority of the excavation taken care of, I did have to figure out a way to trench out a line in order to get to the pipes beside my house. The pipe for my driveway is a 4 inch PVC pipe and the pipe to my sump pump is a 3 inch pipe. But in order to make sure that those pipes are lined up appropriately, I do have to cut off a little excess with a reciprocating saw and fit my 90 degree elbow in place so I know exactly where to line up everything in the future. Plenty deep over here. It's hard to tell exactly where we are depth wise. but. That's approximately 38 inches. So we've got the depth. This is where our pipes are coming through from our drainage in the front of our driveway and then our sump pump that we installed. Now let's get our base taken care of. Our base along with the majority of our backfill is gonna be a 7 8 inch rounded drain rock which is specifically designed for applications like this because it does such a great job at allowing water to flow naturally into the adjacent soil but it also can take on a copious amount of water because of all the air gaps in between each rock. It might not seem like a lot but it is when you're working with a sizable area like this. We spread out and apply approximately six inches of this rock at the very base, and now it's time for the real star of the show. This is a flow well by NDS, and this is a system specifically designed for drainage purposes, mainly in uses with storm water runoff, which is exactly how we're gonna be using it in this application. These small holes, as you see here, are meant to be knocked out in order to allow water to run into the tank easily or out of the tank easily. 
There's also a base and top cap that's built into this structure, and it's very simple to assemble. There are three side panels, and in order to make sure they are assembled, you just have to hook these small hooks into place, which can be done with your bare hands, or it might need a few love taps along the way. It's then as easy as placing the cap right on top and surrounding it with filter fabric. This is a heavy duty filter fabric specifically designed for this exact flow well system. And all I have to do is just tape it at the very top so it doesn't move on us during the installation process. Once taped off and secured appropriately, we can move on to the next barrel. There are three of these 50 gallon tanks built into this system. Some may think that three tanks is overkill, but with the fact that I'm going to be digging a very large hole in my backyard, I might as well make the system overkill than trying to get away with one or two of these tanks. I'm busting a hole in the very top of this one because two of the tanks are going to be completely buried with never to be seen again. However, one of the tanks does need to have some type of outlet available in order to visually inspect sediment buildup over time or just making sure that it's draining properly. In that same flow well, I'm also knocking out two holes in order to accommodate the piping that's coming from the drainage in our driveway, as well as the drainage from our sump pump. They are both gonna be fed into this one well, and for some reason, they don't make it easy on you when connecting your inlets to the system. I had to get a bit creative with my reciprocating saw along with a jigsaw eventually, and then finally get to assembly. Once I knew this inlet actually fit, I could then go back and use a heavy duty, high quality silicone and adhere those inlets properly so they are not coming loose over time. Once fully secured, I then rewrap our flow well with the sediment divider and make sure to cut out holes for our inlets. Our wells are ready to be placed in our very large hole and I try and make sure that we have approximately one foot of space between each flow well. At this time, the one thing you really do want to check for is the overall grade height, because in order to make sure that we have a system that is properly installed, we need to make sure that we have at least eight inches from the very bottom of our lid to the top of the soil. At this time, our barrels do have a fabric divider for sediment, but I want to make sure that all of our rock that we're going to be pouring in this system is not going to be filled up over time with sediment. And in order to prevent that, I'm applying a secondary sediment barrier to make sure that our drainage stays consistent over time. But before we start pouring more rock into this area, we need to make sure that all of our pipe inlets are taken care of. I measure out our first length, cut it with a reciprocating saw, and start installing our 4 inch pipe for our driveway drainage first before we get to the sump pump. Based on how everything lined up with this application, I did have to use a 90 degree and a 45 degree angle to make sure that this system connected properly. But it was pretty straightforward, I just applied an OD primer along with an adhesive that's designed for PVC use. Just make sure you're checking the temperature because it is quite cold as of right now when I'm doing this and the adhesive was a little gummy. With our first pipe installed, I immediately move on to filling our large cavernous hole with more rock because I have a delivery coming. Yep, I figured I'd do a quick calculation to see how much rock I would need in this application, and it turns out I need four yards of rock, which is a lot more rock than I originally anticipated. I don't know why, but you live and you learn, and that's why I ordered three more yards of rock delivered to save me a little time and energy since I need all the time I can get before this rental is due back to the facility. We couldn't back up the dump trailer to the backyard, which is why I'm having to go back and forth with the excavator. However, luckily with this excavator and with the vast majority of excavators out there, you're able to swing it 360 degrees and I'm able to go back and forth in one direction while also simultaneously swinging it the right direction. That actually saves quite a bit of time and energy when considering I never have to back up and then go forward. I'm always basically going forward. But it did take a couple hours just to fill this large cavernous hole because there is a lot of rock and as you can see my grass in the front will also probably need to be reseeded as well. I rake out our rock as needed to make sure that we have a nice level surface and the rock comes up to approximately the very bottom of our lid. 
Once that's taken care of, I then provide one last preventive measure to avoid our rock being saturated with soil over time, and that's to apply the same fabric barrier right on top before we get to applying our soil right on top. Luckily for me, I had just enough time to disperse the soil evenly on the top surface and make sure that soil is compacted with our excavator before I had to return it. And as a friendly reminder, if you do love construction sounds but hate the sound of my voice, there is a channel for you. It's called BYOT Muted. It's basically just the same exact video in a longer format and removing the sound of my voice. So if you enjoy that type of aspect within a video structure, please make sure you check out the link in the description box below. With the vast majority of our soil leveled out and compacted, we can move on to the remaining inlets. And there are actually two inlets left. One is for the sump pump that we have to connect, and the other, in all honesty, is more of an outlet because this will be placed at the very top of one of our tanks just in case this entire system overflows with water. We want to make sure there's a way for the water to exit said tank. Plus, over time, sediment might build up in the very bottom of this center tank because we have two outlets to it. So we want to also be able to access the very bottom of that tank and remove that sediment with a shop vac. I still have to finalize the connection from our inlet to our sump pump inlet. And in order to do so, I stay consistent with our four inch piping along with our elbows, but because my existing pipe with our sump pump is a three inch pipe, I do have to have an adapter for the three inch. And like always, if you're looking for any of the tools or materials seen in this video, I'll make sure to have a link for it in the description box below. Once everything was connected, I then attached a hose to my sump pump outlet and making sure that there was no leaks in our system, along with it draining properly into our flow wells, which as you can see, does. I also double checked the inlet for our driveway just to guarantee that everything worked properly before all the pipes were buried. They did, we could rebury them, and this might not be the best looking project, but it certainly takes a copious amount of stress off of my shoulders, and that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah, 